Today is a special day. Today is God's day, as it is most Sabbaths. But this is a very special day because today we're celebrating freedom. We're celebrating forgiveness. Communion should be a wonderful day, not a sad day. Because you see, when you come together to wash one another's feet, when you come together to take of the bread and take of the wine, Jesus says, I forgive you. I cleanse you. You are mine, and I want you to be free. I want you to be at peace. He says this, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. A man had lived a very godless life. During his lifetime, on several occasions, several people shared with him their remarkable experience that they had with Jesus. But every time they shared their faith with him, he rejected it. He found himself in hospital with inoperable cancer. He had no peace. He didn't know what to do. And so he asked the nurse if a a minister could come and visit him and talk with him with the hope that maybe he could encourage him or help him to get this peace which he so needed. He asked the minister, what happens after death? And the minister said to him, you know, nobody really knows what's going to happen after death. But before he left him, he shared communion with him. Even though he took that communion, the man remained very troubled. That night he spoke to a nurse. He told her that he had been given communion by a visiting minister early in the day, but he said he did not feel he was able to put his life right with God. The Holy Spirit was talking to him. The Holy Spirit was encouraging him to make that decision for Jesus. As he spoke to that nurse, the nurse prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to help her to speak to this man, to say the right words. She sat with him for some time that night. She encouraged him to accept Jesus as his Lord and Saviour. And for the very first time in his life, he experienced God's forgiveness, peace came to his heart. In the days that followed, this young nurse continued to speak with this man, sharing her faith in a way that she knew. She rejoiced that on the day that he died, he died believing in Jesus. He died with the hope of the resurrection. Observing the Lord's Supper has a great significance for all of us. But only when we couple it with sincere faith in Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 27 to 28, Paul warned the believers of his time not to forget the deep significance of the bread and the cup. He said this, Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. I believe it should also say a woman. You see, nobody's exempt. As was mentioned earlier, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's no one here perfect except me and Jeff. But I'm not so sure about Jeff. 
No one is perfect, the Bible says. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He says that if we treat the communion lightly or as an empty ritual, we are guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of our Lord. We are encouraged to remember that Jesus died to make possible our forgiveness. That's why we have the emblems of the bread and the wine to remind us of Jesus' great sacrifice that he gave for each of us. When we do, it leads us into prayerful self-examination, confession and recommitment. We gain a renewed sense of gratitude for what Jesus has done for each of us. We are encouraged this morning to come to the table of invitation. Jesus speaks the inviting words. He says this. If anybody hears my voice, he says. In fact, there should be one before that, which says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. We come to the table because we may. We have been invited. We come to the table by choice, not by coercion. When I was around about six or seven years old, my life was very busy with my friends. We never had computers. We never had iPads. We never had mobile phones. We had fields and we had trees. And we spent all our time when we had finished school running around these fields, climbing these trees and having a wonderful time. But often my mother would say to me, Ron, it's time for your supper. You need, it's time to come in. My heart wasn't on the supper. It was outside with my friends. And I came in under what I would say reluctance because I didn't want to leave my friends. And I ate my supper as fast as I could so that I could get out and be with my friends again, hoping that they too hadn't been told to come in by their mothers for their supper. But the tables before us this morning are not set by my mother, but by my Lord. It is he who stands at the door knocking, calling out an invitation to let him come in and eat this meal with me. I come on my own choice. I come to partake of the emblems of the Lord's Supper with hope, not rushing, because I would like to receive a blessing from my Lord. I come to the table of examination, exception and expectation. Firstly, we come to the table of examination. As Jesus says there in the second part of Revelation 3.20, if anyone hears my voice. I wonder if you heard Jesus knocking on your door this morning, inviting you to come to the table, what would you do? Would you open that door willingly? Or would you feel ashamed and unwilling to open your door? Maybe there might be some sin in your life that shouldn't be there. And you feel a little uncomfortable about that. Can I remind you of what the Bible says? And that is that Jesus came and said, I do not come to condemn you, but to save you. 
And he's inviting you this morning. Hear, listen to what he's saying. He wants to forgive you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants you to be saved to his heavenly kingdom. Paul says this in chapter uh, 11 of Corinthians, let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread, drink of from the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Paul wrote these words in, to the Corinthian Christians. They were living a very conflicted life, some of them. They were living their lives for themselves, not for Jesus. But he didn't want them to be lost. And he pleaded with them, before you come to the table, examine yourself. Ask God, as Peter said in the prayer, ask God to reveal what's in your heart so that you can confess that sin. And when you come together to wash each other's feet, be willing to humble yourself, not just to God, but to the person that, whose feet you are washing. Say to them, I accept you for who you are, because Jesus accepts you for who you are. In Arizona, the state employment officials in Tucson posted an interesting sign over a mirror. And it says simply, would you hire this person? It was directed to everybody that came into that office for a job interview. And in another office, next door, a sign posted, are you ready for the job? Self-evaluation was what the Apostle Paul called for in 1 Corinthians 11. When we come to the table of the Lord, we need to ask ourselves, is my life right with the Lord and with my fellow brother and sister in Christ? Is what I am doing lifting up Jesus or the enemy? Paul says we need to examine ourselves to avoid being disciplined by the Lord and lost to his kingdom. He wrote, Paul said to the Corinthian Christians, something that applies to us as well in preparation for the Lord's Supper. We should always be willing to look at ourselves, not look at others. It's easy to look at somebody else and say, you've got that sin, you've got that sin, but what about yourself? And Paul says, look at yourself. See what's inside of you. Give it to Jesus. The table by its presence of the one who prepared it brings each of us to partake of the emblems before us, the point of self-appraisal, that is seeing our worth in Christ Jesus, and self-evaluation, seeing our works in Christ Jesus. Once we see that, the next step is to come to the table of exception. Revelation 3.20 says, I open the door. If I knock on your door, listen to hear that knock. Be willing to open it, he says. But the invitation is not only to hear, but to open the door of our hearts and our minds to the Lord Jesus Christ. Having given an examination, we now have the opportunity to make Jesus first in our lives. In John 3, 3, we read, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is an important step for every single one of us. 
Many Seventh-day Adventists are what I call born in the church. But we have to have an experience with Jesus individually. You cannot be saved just because your mother might be the treasurer of the church. You cannot be saved just because your father might be the elder of the church. The only way that you can be saved is that you open that door and that you be born again of the Spirit. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Nobody can come. Nobody can get into heaven except through Jesus Christ. The invitation to open the door is a direct call to repentance. Repent and revolve around Jesus as the centre of your life. Repent and renounce all other loyalties of life with Jesus as the love of your life. Repent and restore fellowship with Jesus as the bread of your life. Jesus says in John 10, 9, I am the door. Jesus is the door to the abundant life, the living now with Jesus as our life and he the eternal life that is being promised in the future. Thirdly, we come to the table of expectation. In Revelation 3.20, D, Jesus says, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Having examined our lives in the light of our Lord Jesus Christ, making him the exception in our lives, we can now come to the table with expectation. Jesus says, I will come into him. As we come to the table, we are assured that Jesus is present here to bless today. This morning, the meal has been prepared. The invitation has been given to each of us. And so we must make the reply, as Jesus says once more, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. So my question to you this morning, as we separate to wash one another's feet, when you have done so, will you come to the table? Amen.